Hello, you are listening to the Divorce University Online Podcast with your hosts, Thomas and Tammy Ferreira. Hi, I'm Tammy. And I'm Thomas. And today we are talking about a couple of specific topics involved in child custody, and that is bonding with your child versus disciplining your child. And I think this is a this is something we see a lot of parents go through. And I think that, you know, if you do it well in the beginning, it bears fruit, particularly in the teenage years. And if you do it poorly in the beginning, it makes the teenage years particularly difficult. And if you're going through your divorce during the teenage years, well, that's just a whole nother kind of yeah. nightmare. Good altogether. luck to you. Yeah, that's the state, <laughs> that's the state I was in. So it was uh, quite a fun ride. Right. And I find that our philosophy and things we've said in the past tend to be misconstrued in this area. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the two are not mutually exclusive. Right. Uh, yes. You have to dare to discipline. That was a topic that we did uh, like three or four weeks ago. Oh, I think it was longer than that, but yeah. Uh-huh. Time flies when you're having fun. Right. Right. <laughs> and by the same token, the, you know, relationship is like capital. And, and I think that's a good metaphor um, that uh, I don't know where I read this. But it, it, it's like a bank account that you deposit money into. I know where you read it. Where? It is from, I think it's from one of Harville Hendrix's books because he talks about it in the concept of a marital relationship. Right. And um, and how. Well, it, maybe you could save your marriage by. Maybe. Maybe it came from that, or maybe it was a kid book. I don't know. Anyway, it, it, we did it, read a book it, that, that talked about this, the love bank. Yeah. I, let me just tell you, in, in my opinion, relationship is king. Right. You know, in other words, what the court is looking for is warmth in the parent-child relationship. A bond. A when bond. you say a relationship is king, you mean your bond with your child. Right. And that's, that's the primary thing. Right. And that's something that takes continuous investment to, and effort. to maintain. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned teenagers before. And if you make those investments when they're young, then you will have capital to spend when you have to discipline them as teenagers. Like when you have to, I don't know, pick them up at the, at, at the, uh, police station to use a, a complete, random example just a random example yes <laughs> um that's not from our personal life by the way mm -hmm. um and i think that um you know one of the things that happens too is like you know there's a lot of talk of parental alienation and i know that's kind of right. a, a controversial topic but we find a lot of times when parents struggle with their bond with the child after divorce or struggle with getting parenting time or the child wanting to go with them or whatever. It's because that it was rooted in that original issue of not bonding when the child's young. Yeah. You don't get that time back. That's true. You, you don't get it back. And I will tell you that, um, I, you know, I have, I have two little granddaughters and well, I, I have three granddaughters and a grandson, but not to leave anybody out, but I have two little granddaughters that are five and three. And my first granddaughter, it was just her. They live out of state. Mm -hmm. I would go visit about every six weeks. I'd go on the plane, even if it was just for the weekend. I'd FaceTime through the week and all that. Second baby came. She came. She turned one during COVID. Yeah. <laughs> during the very beginning of COVID. And so I went, you know, pretty regularly when she was a baby. But then when she hit one, I, I couldn't go with as much consistency because of all the travel restrictions and all that. And it's made it more challenging in some ways. I mean, I, I love all my grandkids. They're all a blessing. And I, and I have a special bond with each of them individually in different ways, but it's taken a little bit more with the one that I with didn't get child. to be present. Well, and now the baby, now, right. now I'm going through the same thing with the baby because I, it's right. been some similar situations. And so right. I'm just saying that it, I'm not saying that you can't ever create a bond just because you miss some of that time. But what I'm saying is if you take, if you're in the position to take advantage of that stage, it's huge. Right. But here's what happens is that people have a lot of anxiety around something you mentioned before, which is the issue of alienation. Right. And as a consequence of that, they tend to not 
be the parent. They, you know, and not You're afraid discipline. your kid's not going to like you. As you're, yeah, you you see it, it as a contest right. with your ex over who the child likes more. Correct. Who the child loves more, yes. Yeah. And, and when you do that, you're opening yourself up to manipulation by that child. Correct. Right. Uh, so yeah, I've heard it said... And I think it was Dennis Prager that said this, but it's it's absolutely true that uh, you your role in your child's life is not to be their friend. Correct. Okay. And that's something we hear from the courts. Right. We've heard many a judge say, "Be the parent." Right. Be the parent. Right. So being being um, having a warm relationship is not the same thing as as being their friend. Right. Because a friend is somebody that you confide in, like a peer, right? Like somebody that you tell your struggles to, and and some somebody that you reveal your emotions to, right? And a lot of times that's really bad policy with in parenting. Yes, that's true. I mean, and part of the problem is is that you know we start to think that the children's input or that the children should drive decisions. Or, you know, we should listen to the child when it comes to, you know, what we're going to do on the parenting plan or this or that. And it's like, we don't do that in a normal, a, a normal, um, what am I trying to say? Like a, like if the parents aren't divorced, mm -hmm. you know, I yeah. mean, I, I was married for 17 years the first time my oldest son was 15. Right. His dad and I never once went to him and said, so. <laughs> You know, what do you think our work schedule should be? Right. Yeah. Who do you think should drop you off at school? Right. What do you think you should pack for lunch today? Now, I might give him choices and say, you can take a Lunchable or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You know, I might give him options based on what I have available and the time I have. But I don't go to the child for decision making, you know, things right. about the house. You wouldn't go in and say, hey. I have a quarter tank of gas in my car. You think we should run down and get gas tonight or should we try to squeeze it in in the morning on the way to school? You, you don't <laughs> leave that decision to the child, right? right? And suddenly we go through divorce and everybody's about, well, what does the child want? Well, no. Right, right. No, the child needs to be the child told. Wants to sit, the child wants to sit on their, on their device <laughs> and eat candy. Yes. <laughs> yes. And have nobody interrupt them and let them stay up as late as they want and not brush their teeth. And mm -hmm. if they're boys never shower. And you know, at least when they're little, hey, that's true. Little sexism. Boys don't, I, look, I'm on number four. Little boys don't like to shower until they start get, getting interested. When they in get girls. interested in girls. They yes. Do. That was when because I we first... won't talk to you if you don't shower. <laughs> that's true. It's really funny. It's like one day when I was 15, I suddenly started to be interested in my appearance. Right. <laughs> and your smell. And before that, I didn't care. Right. 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 I, I, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but, but, you know, that's what kids would do, right? Left to their own devices. And so we don't leave them to their own devices. We make the rules. And right. yet sometimes when we go through a divorce, and I'm not saying all parents do this, but a lot tend to start to think, well, the child has a say. The child doesn't have any more of a say than they did when you were still right. with the other parent. It's not, you know. And right. so that becomes a real hard shift for a lot of people. And, right. and I will say moms in particular, we struggle with that because our mama bear instinct is to protect the child. That's true. You know, but I, th I think a lot of my guys are confused about what it means to be child focused. Right. Uh, and it means, oh, you know, you have to be completely open emotionally all the time. That's what being child focused is. But that's not what the court means by that. Right. You know, the court means that you're willing to impose some tough love on the kids sometimes. Right. Well, and being child focused, uh, I've seen the judge interpret things like, okay, two parents are living in the same area of town and they're 10 minutes apart from each other. And one parent, because of their career, decides to move 45 minutes away. Right. You know, and we, we, we actually observed this was not Thomas's case, but we actually observed this in a courtroom one day. And the judge said to the parent that had moved, look it's clear that you're not as child focused because right. you're the one that's able to just get up, 
move, put your career first, whatever. You don't think about the fact that the, it's 30, 40 minutes to the child's school. The child's having to endure that every day. That's the type of thing the court's talking about when they're talking about being child focused, right. building your life around the child. And that doesn't mean giving the child whatever they want. It's not right. the same thing. It means promoting their well-being. Correct. Which which they don't really have a say in. <laughs> right. Because if they did have a say, all they would do is sit on their device and eat candy. Right. Right. Uh, and stay up all night. Yeah. <laughs> and never shower if they're a boy. That's, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so there's that end of the continuum. And this is kind of where you know, I had a guy... Uh, this morning that I was talking to who said that, you know, my big mistake is that I'm Disneyland dad. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be that. And again, I think he's missing something there. Right. Because Disneyland, and this is kind of the other half of the continuum. Right. Disneyland is really cool for kids. Right. You know, and if you can use Disneyland to to make memories with the child. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's a difference between having a parent that bribes a child. Yeah. Because we've seen that. And having a parent that engages in fun activities with the child. Right. You know, so, you know, if you're taking the kid to Disneyland and you're dropping them off at the gate with three other friends and leaving them for the day and coming back and getting them, I mean, on occasion, okay, but if you're doing that every time you have the kid, then okay, you're probably just buying the kid off. You're not really engaging in an activity with the kid in that circumstance. Right. But if you go and you have a little five-year-old, you know, seven-year-old, they love Disneyland. And so you go and you spend the day and you take tons of pictures and you ride all the rides and right. you do all the things. And, you know, we've, we've done that with your kids over the years a couple of times when they were very young. They're older now. And one of the th other things Thomas and I used to do is, you know, we tend to take a lot of road trips right. and we didn't do that because we were trying to buy somebody off and we didn't do that during mom's parenting time. Right. We made sure it all fell during our parenting time. But if we have a long weekend, you know, we're in San Diego, we might go to Phoenix or go to Vegas or go to San Francisco or go, you know, yeah. whatever, and just explore different areas. Right. And what that does is it gets the kids out of the house, off the device. They're locked in the car with you, so they pretty much have to talk to you or sit in <laughs> silence, you know? And, you that's know, evil. And, and you're sharing the same experiences, and that's part of what the bonding is. And if you have teenagers, I would highly encourage you to find even just short day trips that you can do because it really does force them to kind of interact with you in a way that you don't do when right. you're at home if you have teenagers. Right. So being you know, the parent and not be making that child your confidant is right. not the same thing as as taking them to Disneyland or or road trips or movies right. or what whatever it is that you do in your house right. for recreation right you know i like to have my my boys are 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 18 and 19 now uh but when they're in my house i make them come down when i cook dinner because that's family time yeah and pretty much every saturday morning you guys surf yeah. That's been, that's kind of been their whole, ever since they were old enough to do the whole surf thing. You just promote that because you like to sleep in on Saturday. I do like to sleep in on Saturday. It's <laughs> fine with me. Y'all go. Y'all go surf. That's my only <laughs> quiet time the whole week is Saturday mornings. So, but, you know, having, having that time and having that ability to create that relationship, like you said, isn't the same thing as, you know as um like um spoiling them or you know what whatever however it can be right. interpreted that's you know is, is, spo is it spoiling them to take them surfing every saturday because they love it well i i don't know i guess they're spoiled that they live near the ocean they're spoiled right. that they have surfboards there's certain things about it that are mm -hmm. but that saturday morning thing is a special thing that you always do with them so it's you and it's just you and them right it's, I mean, occasionally we'll take a friend And they're friends whatever. these uh, days. Yeah, occasionally a friend it's or like whatever. It's like they, they have these social media and they get on their device and they find out 
where all their friends their are. DM, and they go, yeah. oh yeah, we're going surfing. We're going to be it. And suddenly There's I'm like sitting out there. And, 10, 18 and, year olds out there with you. Yeah. <laughs> you and all the it's 18 like, Oh, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> How did you know we were here? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's, you know, those things are, are important things, but you also have to have the ability, like Thomas said, to bring that discipline in because it's, again, I mean, we, we look towards the teenage years because if you're not there yet, you haven't experienced what come, what's coming. And if you are there, you know, the difficulty we're talking about, but what happens is if you don't have that authority established early and you don't have the relationship that gives you the authority, Right. Then they go into teenagehood and you can't control anything. You right. know, I've got a couple of moms right now that are just having the darndest time with teenagers because it's it's a shift in those years and they become a lot more resistant. And when you yeah. have I have a few a things. co-parent that isn't supportive, it's hard. Yeah. And and I have a few things to say about go. that later on. But I, I wanted to 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 something came into my head. Uh I had a guy uh that I was coaching. Uh, who uh, told me that his little kid, like five years old, um, was saying inappropriate, like disrespectful things. Uh -huh. uh, and he thought that mom was kind of putting him up to it. And, and he was reticent about coming down on the kid for this. And I said to him, you have to punish him for that. Right. You know, you... Yeah, when when he is disrespectful, you know, if if he forgets to make his bed, okay, you can let that slide, right? Okay, but if he's blatantly, ver blatantly yeah. verbally disrespecting you, uh, and I gave an example from my own wife again, because that's the that's where the all the examples come draw. from. <laughs> yes, mostly. Yeah, when my uh, younger son was five, three, I think he was three. Okay, maybe he was three, but the he the, was tiny. The point is, he was little, and he you was. don't you don't expect this behavior from little kids, right? That's why it was so funny. But they test the little kids test you, okay, yeah. and they want to see what they can get away with, right? And how far they can push it, yeah. And if you're soft because you're worried that that your kid won't like you, right? You know, if you're in that contest right. to be likable with your ex. Uh, you've, and if you don't stand up to this, it's going to get worse. Right. And Be you were in a, you were, you were already divorced and in a full parenting plan when this happened. Right. Yeah. So and tell the story. Cause yeah, we all want to know. I'm going to make it real quick. The, okay. You're driving in the car, but uh, the kids in their car seats in the back. And, uh, uh, I, my son, my younger son called me a crackhead. <laughs> Which I think he learned like, from one of my what, teeth. I don't teenage, even think he knew what a crackhead was. Teenage sons, I think, because they used to walk around calling each other. Boys call each other names. It's the weirdest thing. But anyway. And, and I, I said to him, you are not to speak to me that way, young man. You, I do not ever want to hear you say that word again. And his car seat, this child's car seat was directly behind Thomas in the car. And so I wasn't with them. So he's behind him and the little one's behind him in the car. And the older one is on the opposite passenger side of the back seat. Right. So, so I'm driving along and I hear him whisper, crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped the car. I don't know. I probably would have started laughing if I was there. But... Yeah. Well, you can't, <laughs> I know you can't Art. do that. I know you have to, you have to, nip that in the bud because disrespect of parents uh is you know is something that's going to destroy your authority with them right and then you won't be able to make them make their bed right so yeah i pulled the car and and i, I slant you know i i braked a little bit hard and then i pulled over and i got out of the car and i pulled him out of the seat and i stood him next to the car and i said young man i am you know this close to Open up a can of whoop ass, you know, <laughs> beating your butt. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, and and I've never struck the kids. But no, it's, <laughs> but honestly, it was important in that moment for him to be afraid of me. Yeah, to draw that boundary with him. Right, he had to know that that that's a serious infraction. Right, 
uh, and and you can't let them disaway with get away with disrespect. You can't get them let them get away with defiance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just straight out. Yeah, straight up defiance. It's like they'll problem. try that. The even the little ones, they'll try that with you. Yep. I, I am not doing it. I am not mommy, no, I'm not brushing my teeth. Yeah. Oh. Well. Yeah. Well, then you can sit and time out and think about that for a while. Yeah, my 32-year-old's thing when he was 3 cuz you know, 3 <laughs> is the horrible time. He had put his little hands on his hips and just, you know, just straighten up his back and he'd say, me do myself, mommy. <laughs> right. That was his thing always. <laughs> right. And, you know, they're little human beings and, and, you know, they're wicked like the rest of us. Right. Um, and and they need what, what the Bible refers to as the rod of correction. And that right. doesn't mean you have to beat them with a rod. It just means that you, it means you have to discipline them. Yeah, and you have you have to not fear that right. that you'll lose because and here the illusion uh, is that you could lose their affection, but you really can't. Well, especially when they're little, and mm -hmm. then when they get older, mm -hmm. then you know it 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 you do get to the point where you're overtaken by the teenage power if you don't maintain that level of authority. Right. You know it's it's hard and. You know, on the flip side of this, I don't think that means be rigid. I think if you're super rigid, right. your your kids are going to rebel against that, too. If you're super rigid and you're not doing any of the fun bonding things, right. then you're going to have a rebellious kid on yeah. your hand when rules, they get a little older. Rules without relationship equals rebellion. Right. And that's why this is a balance. It's a balance of that bond with the child and having fun and engaging in activities together and spending time together but also bringing in the discipline and the correction and all of those things. And there's a balance to those two things. And if you're too far off one direction or the other, right. then you have chaos. And, and not that you don't have some chaos anyway, but you have worse chaos, you know. And Thomas was talking about the love bank earlier. And, you know, I think that what happens in particular is when they're little, you're really uh, filling up their love bank a lot, right? Yes. Like you're not that they remember it consciously or anything, but you're, you know, from the moment they come out, you're changing diapers and you're feeding and nursing and, you know, doing, well, the guys are feeding women or nursing, whatever, or some of both. But, and then, and then, you know, as they get older, you know, you're the one cooking their food, preparing their meals, or you're doing their bedtime routine or you're doing whatever. And, you know, the parents are sharing in that a lot of times and all that kind of thing. And so that is constantly filling a child's love bank, right? right? So then when you discipline them, you make a little withdrawal from the love bank, but it's still really, really full and yeah. you refill it pretty quickly. Right. You know, what happens is it's almost like when you go through the, the single digit years, you're saving up. Yeah. It's like, it's like a savings account. Right. You're putting money in your love bank right. daily. And then when they get to the teenage years, that's when you start to spend. You are making constant <laughs> withdrawals with very little refill. Right. You know, but you know, I, I wanted, now this is where, what I wanted to say earlier is that, uh, there are things, here's what I do with my teenagers to, to bond with them. Uh, I cook them dinner. Okay. Boys are big on being fed. Yeah, boys are big on being fed. I, I don't that's know. That's how you bonded with my younger son too. That's true. I never thought of that, but that's true. <laughs> yeah. He I'm a good cook. Yeah. And 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 you're willing to do it, which is more than I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but that's a huge thing. You know, even if you're even if you suck at it, you know, that kind of domestic caretaking right. is a way to bond with a teenager. You don't have to get interested in uh I don't know what's the latest uh, video game craze. I don't even know. I don't know. Um, but uh, you, you know, you don't have to to follow them into all of their interests. Uh, but you care for them, right? You know, we. You now Tammy was always team mom, for example. Right. Right. Uh, which means that she got them there, and she made sure they had their Gatorade. Yep. Uniform was clean. Yeah. She even. Gave them a few tips on their shot once in a while and all that stuff. But basketball, uh, my kids play basketball. Yeah, and but but you know at the same time, if like say one of them wanted to quit, right? Oh, I want to quit basketball, mom. I'm tired of this. Well, you can quit basketball when the season's over, right? 
you made a commitment to this team, and by golly, that's right. not, you know, Ferreras are not quitters. Well, they're not Ferreras, but yes. Right. Shackelfords are not quitters <laughs> right. either. Right. You're right. So, except for. Well, except for their dad, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> I, 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 I knew. I knew what you were thinking. Yeah, we were both thinking the same thing. My Shacklefords are not quitters, okay? That's right. And and they're not. You know, no. they've demonstrated that with their own families. Right. Uh, but, you know, you you have to have high expectations for your teenagers. Right. And, and again, softening them and, and to combat alienation is t- just going to make matters worse. Right, because we tend to think that children gravitate towards the freedom side. And I, and occasionally they'll go through phases, depending on their age, where that's kind of true. But honestly, I can tell you, based on my own experience and watching hundreds of other people, I was talking to somebody about this over the weekend, children gravitate towards the structure most of the right. time. And by structure, I don't mean rigidness. I don't mean bringing down unnecessary unnecessary rules and yeah, regulations like, with teenagers. It's like you I'm, know? Ta- I'm taking your surfboards away because you were 10 minutes late getting home from school. Yeah, so no surfing for a month. Like, yeah. you have to be, you know, you, you can't be extreme. Like, again, with a teenager, you get rebellion. Mm-hmm. But, well, and you also have to pick your battles. I think that's the big key with teenagers. That's what is, Reba says. Yeah, the Reba show that we watch reruns of. You have to pick your battles because... If you are on them over every single thing they did every single day, that you just they won't be able to tolerate living with you. Right. And so you have to kind of pick and choose what's important here, right. the things that I want them to know and learn. And so, but if you are doing, um, you know, if you're if you're being super super rigid, you're probably going to push them away. But at the same time, too much chaos right. is something that they they pull back from as well. And we've seen this. We've got a situation now where we've got a a, a, a client who is very, very loose and bohemian and just anything goes. And, you know, the yeah. house is usually a mess and everything's chaos and blah, 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 whatever we decide to do today. And then the other side, as you can imagine, is the opposite kind of personality who is super, super rigid, right. you know, down to, you know, we use a hundred brush strokes to brush our teeth before bed kind of thing. You have to count your brush strokes. Yeah. So like one extreme to the other between the two households, but the children are kind of at those cracking points that, you know, I like to call them, which is like 12, 13, 14, depending on the child, I find they start to get more insistent about their own preferences in the parenting plan. And it's almost like because there is literally no discipline no structure, no anything in the one house, even though the other house is overstructured and overdisciplined, they're starting to gravitate towards that house. Right, right, yeah. Because well, children need security. They need those boundaries. Right. Yeah, and and uh, too much freedom is you know, I mean, a they, recipe for disaster. They, they, they love it for a while. Yes. And then, oh my gosh, there's nothing to eat in the house. Right, or yeah. the police are calling you at two in the morning or whatever random thing it is. <laughs> yeah. But you make, you know, what I advocate uh, in any parenting plan, so I don't care if the kids are 17 and a half and ready to, right. to emancipate, you want to create that world. Right. And it's got to be a world in which things make sense. Yeah. And where, they feel loved. Where discipline is, is meted out for wrongdoing. Right. Not just abuse, which is random. Right. Uh, and that, you know, we curtail certain freedoms out of love for one another. We we have boundaries. Right. Right. And, and you have to teach that to kids. They don't they don't come out of the shoot knowing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, <clears throat> you know, same with your kids, like we track them a lot more closely. We pay attention where they are. I mean, they're, and they they're, feel loved they, by that. They, That's what you were saying. They do. They, I mean, they're yeah. adults, they're 18 and 19 and you know, I'm not really going to stop them from going anywhere if there's no good reason to, to stop them. But you know, you at least need to check in with us and have the courtesy of letting us know, you know, where, where you're at in general, who you're going to be right. with and when you're going to be home. I mean, you live in the household, you know, we right. at least need to know you're alive and that you're going to 
come home back to your bed. <laughs> right. As long yeah. as you as long as you live under the, this roof and right. we're supporting you, then then I expect to, to a certain level of courtesy. So you need to know, and and I'm bad about this. Yeah. Because I'm you know I'm soft hearted. That's yes, why, you are. That's why I need Tammy to help me. But you know it, you you need to find out who who are the friends. Right. You know who are you going to go see? Oh, that's somebody I don't know. Who are they? Where do they live? Well, and your little one is quite deceptive. I call him little one. He's the baby, but he's 18. And he's quite deceptive because he'll do things like he'll come in and say, hey, can I go skate with such and such and such and such after school? And you're like, sure, no problem. And then you come in and it's like, and then when he actually comes in to go for it, it's like, oh, well, actually, you know, I'm the one driving and there's no gas in the car. And I'm picking up these three other people and they all live in these all other areas. Then we're going over here to actually skate and we're probably going to get some dinner. So I need some money. And right. it's like suddenly and, and then you'll and then I'll say something like, well, I don't know if I'm OK with all that. Well, dad said I could. <laughs> well, dad said you could because you just have to be go skate with a couple people after school. You didn't give the whole. Right. You know, and so you have to ask questions right. and you have to know. Like they'll say things like, can I go do this? Well, what exactly does that mean? How are you getting there? How are you getting home? You know, right. who's going to be there? You know, right. all those kinds of questions. Right. And and the four boys, uh, if they know one thing, it's that we care about. Them. Yes. We care about them enough to to restrict their activities. Right. Yeah. You know, Tammy, her older son, she went and hid the car one time. <laughs> That's a story for another time. That's a right? good story. <laughs> That's that fun. was one of my finer drove parenting the, moments. We drove the car to her friend's house and we parked it in her garage. <laughs> what? <laughs> he wouldn't give up the key. Okay, I had a, he was seventeen at the time and yeah. he he wouldn't give up his key. Right. I had a key and he had a key and he wouldn't give up his key. So I had to get the car far enough away, you know, and locked up enough to where he couldn't get to it. And he told me years later that he actually scoured um, parking <laughs> lots looking for the car and stuff near the house and of course didn't find it what was the infraction what was uh the... he he had he came home drinking and somebody did drive him yeah and drove and we had to go back and get his car oh i remember that yeah so she drove him home and she was sober and i talked to her and everything but he was 17 and he was he was inebriated. drunk off yeah. his butt yes yeah. so i took the car away for two weeks and so when we had since we had to go pick the car up because yeah. he didn't drive it because he was drinking um, I just called one of my friends who has no children and, and therefore, you know, has a little more space for things like that. <laughs> and I just said, Hey, yeah. can, I, can, we can I store my car with you for a couple of weeks? And she's like, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, weird request. You know, no, no frame of reference. And he was, kids, he but. was really bent out of shape about not having the car. He was angry. That's like the one thing that meant something to him. Yeah. Right. And, and that's kind of what you what you have to reserve for those big uh, infractions is well, not yeah. not only that, but you were like it was related because you yeah. were gone in the car and then right. you couldn't get the car home because you, you had were, been drinking, right. even though you're underage. Right. Well, I, I mean, you shouldn't if you've had that much as much as he had had to drink, even if he had been 21, it would have been a problem. But um, yeah. Right. So so on that happy note. So, dear, so someday do, we're going to sit down and just just do a book of all of our experiences with all the kids. Yeah, I'm and I'm I'm writing it, but uh, I never I never seem to get it done. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you got to dare to discipline, right? You know, and you're raising children. You're not, you know, creating friends, right? They're, they're not your friend right. per se, but they're your family member, right? And there should be a love bond between you. And there are ways that you can promote that love bond. You know, you got to go out there and make memories. Right. You know, I have uh, pictures on my phone of, of all the trips we've taken. Yeah. And sometimes we're sitting at dinner. Kids are 18 and 19. And they're browsing through my phone looking at the all the, at the memories. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. And, you know... <sighs> We tend to think that, like, uh, people worry about what the other parent says or does or whatever. I'm telling you, Thomas and I both had stages of the co-parenting where the other person was speaking negatively about us. You know, uh, Thomas's kids at one point were, were forced to call their stepdad dad and him by his first name. And, you know, we, we just we've been through all those types of things where the other parent is clearly trying to alienate you. 
And I'm telling you, if you will balance your bonding and your discipline and not be, just be kind of an, the, the average, the way an average parent, I mean, I don't know if there is anything such as average or normal, but don't be extremes, like have appropriate discipline, appropriate boundaries, but also an appropriate amount of love and affection and bonding with your child there you go. and everything else will take care of itself, including the court. Right. So, all right. If you are listening to the podcast, don't forget to rate and review us and also subscribe. So you get notified as new episodes are released each week. We do appreciate the reviews. It helps other people find us. It helps our ranking and all that kind of thing. Uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit like on this video and also subscribe to our channel so you get notified as new videos are released each week. And we'll see you next time. We'll see you then. Thank you for listening to the Divorce University Online Podcast with your hosts, Thomas and Tammy Ferreira. For more information, visit www.divorceuniversityonline.com.